In life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. Sometimes in life, we are prosperous, and other times in life, we are poor. Sometimes in life, we live in affluence, and other times in life, we live in influence. Sometimes in life, we live in survival mode. Other times, we live in security mode. And there are other times and moments in time when we live in significance. The real question is, what are you doing philanthropically? Are you literally carrying with you a gift card to gift to someone who might be in need, who might need some extra cash at the grocery store, or who might literally need a full tank of gas when they can only afford a quarter tank of gas? You see, in life, we have to know where our resources lie. Are our resources in our talent? Are our resources in our time? Are resources in our actual treasure in terms of income or prosperity or wealth, affluence, etc., millionaire dumb, if you will? Or are our resources in, in connecting people to opportunities? When a man stands before you and he's looking for a job, what do you do? A lot of people just say, gosh, I don't know anybody looking for someone. And I want to respond to them in a matter of fact and sort of idiosyncratic kind of way to say, did you bother to reach out to anyone to ask them? Or are you so lordly over their lives that you know every single person that they know in their little network of connections? Do you have enough funds in your own bank account that you could hire someone to do something for you at a reasonable enough wage or at whatever it is that they need in trade in order to get down and accomplish what you would want to accomplish? Now, normally, I don't believe in trade in terms of business services, but sometimes there are trades that make sense. It just depends on the individual. It just depends on whether or not they feel there's a value in what they're going to gain, but also a value in what they're going to give. One of the best ways to help a homeless person literally is to give them gift cards with proof that there's actually money on the gift card and a way to check it before they go in and try and shop for something. In life, we have gift cards that are easily accessed by employees, and that's not good. We need to have gift cards that actually tell what the final total is and a way to stamp it in a book like they do with bank books in Japan would be awesome. If it was actually a bank book of gift carding system where you actually inputted the bank book or the gift card book into the computer itself where it literally digitized how much you spent and how much was left, that'd be really super. Our banks should be doing that in America from learning from Japanese banks. That there's an easy way to do that, but we don't do it that way, which leaves us a little bit at risk with not only all the identity theft that can go on in the world, but also with the fraud that can go on with actual bankers who manage and manipulate our funds. I know that in my life and my time on staying in one apartment, a credit card went missing and a different credit card came into its place. I know this because I made a note to look at the numbers. I also knew that I was still able to utilize the card, but I noticed that there was purchasing going on that looked like me, but it wasn't really me. I had no receipts to match to those purchases. So there's lots of ways that people steal our bank accounts and steal our identities and ruin our lives, but it doesn't make it lawful, it doesn't make it right, and it certainly doesn't give them any representation in the house of God. There are other ways to help homeless people, which is to provide them canned goods. Canned goods that they can carry so that if they get dropped, they don't bust open in the horrible plastic bags that can be part of inexpensive products. And openly, not everyone needs a toothbrush or soap. They literally might need a clean pair of socks. They might need access to a laundromat or coins to go to the laundry or a travel transportation like an Uber type of uh, gift card that would help them to get where they need to go on time instead of literally waiting for a bus, traveling for an hour, and not being able to really make it there in the right time. You see, in life, we have moments of time where people need telephones. There are certainly telephones that don't get hacked, but there's also old telephones that can be easily used on Wi-Fi without any SIM card at all, I believe. You see, there's also old laptops that people have hoarded in their houses, in their garages, in their closets that could be revamped, refurbished, and given to homeless folks so they have half a chance at producing a resume, learning, and doing things in their timing instead of waiting for a building to open and literally going in and then falling asleep there because they spent the whole night worrying about where they were going to stay that was safe. You see, there's all sorts of ways to help people, and that's in technology I'm talking about. But in life, we have moments of time to really make a difference for someone. And if you've got an inkling, you should do something. And if you're getting the code words of your soul that sort of lead you to believe I should be doing this, then it's time to get on with it because life for people goes by pretty quick. And the minute that you hesitate, the minute that you fail to follow through on God's plan for that individual that you plan to help is possibly the minute in which God says, you know that thing I planned for you that was going to be really great? I just decided to take it away because you didn't listen to what I wanted you to do. You decided to lord over someone's life, take away their rights, divide their family, ruin their property, vandalize their home, and literally destroy 
the love in the soul of someone who really loved an individual. In life, we have moments of time to say, I love you. And when I say it, I mean it. And when I provide it, I deliver it. And when I say these things, I'm talking to one individual who might be listening to me now. That in life, if you're going to monkey around in someone's life, you have to be prepared for the ramifications and the evaluations of other people watching you. That you might be thinking you're getting away with things when in fact other people are watching, they're paying attention, and they know what you're doing because your text messaging and other technology tools that you think are private aren't private anymore. This new ridiculousness of monitoring every second of an employee's day is foolery. It dehumanizes the individual's soul that needs the freedom to think without feeling like they're going to be listened to for every thought they might utter out loud, every human reaction they might have in a situation before they have had a chance to really think it through again and go, you know, this is really a better way, or I like it this way now that I've had a chance to mull it over and talk about it with myself. In life, we have moments of time to make all the difference in the world for people. If it's your moment to make a difference for someone, I'd say reach out as quickly as possible, because life can turn horrible for people without you even knowing it. It can also get better for people by the fact that you can praise the fact of what they're trying to accomplish given the obstacles that they have and the fact that a person may not know where their next meal is going to be, where their next home is going to be, where their next safe night threat is going to be, and whether or not they're going to be manhandled the night and having things stolen from them all day long. Now in life, we have moments of time to make a difference. I'm encouraging each and every one of you who listens to step, simply step out of your comfort zones, take a risk, and literally find out if the risk is worth it. That's the only way you can do it. You have to decide the value of people. Do people have enough value to have a shelter in their night? Do people have enough value to sleep on a floor where it's safe? Do people have enough value to for you to say, hey, you know, I can give you this gift card because I have means to do it. And openly, could you trust them enough to realize that the more savvy of them are going to literally use it and spend it wisely? In life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone and we have moments of time to be monsters in their lives. It's only a matter of your perspective of whether or not you feel you are a loving individual or a hateful soul. Loving people don't do harmful things to other people. Hateful people destroy the lives of others. In time, we know what God's rules are. But other than that, we have to decide that God might know a lot more about the world than we do or than any politician does. And if you want that information, you have to be willing to listen, you have to be willing to implement, you have to be willing to do it in the timing that is required. And if you're too late, it's too late because you failed to listen. But sometimes God gives you a second chance. And this might be your second chance to make a difference for someone. I'm encouraging you today to think about the people you've been thinking about and reflecting about and wondering about and whether or not you should do something and do it immediately. Because God is watching and he's produ producing for you your life worth living, and retirement worth having based on what he sees you do to help other people. Thanks for listening.